I love this journey through the surrendering guide, the creative practices, the teaching by folks that have gone ahead of me to give me ideas about how to go deep in this friendship with Jesus and to encounter him. And I'm so glad that you're along on this journey. Good job, good progress coming through Encounter Practice 2. And I wish I could hear your personal testimony of experience with the surrendering postures or some reflection on how God spoke to your heart as you looked in on the transformation of Peter and the highs and lows of his, his journey of learning how to have a deeply surrendered life and relationship with Jesus. Uh, but now we're ready to go forward with Encounter Practice 3, and this is going to be really good. Um, I want to take a moment with uh, the beginning of this uh, chapter 3 to look at the blue uh, little box that surrounds some very powerful words at the beginning. And uh, you've seen it at the beginning of each encounter so far, but here it is, the vision clearly stated. Let's keep the vision in mind. Unbroken fellowship with God in Christ through the entire day. How amazing is that? Unbroken fellowship through the entire day. And then here's a simple statement concerning the means to this lofty goal. A definite conscious encounter with the person of Christ and surrendering to his presence for the entire day. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Andrew Murray. Now, a little creativity and a little bit of uh, energy can go right here on your surrendering flame practices. The scripture is so very clear, all of the various illustrations of the lamp and the flame. And I, I love especially um, Exodus describing for us how this experience with the oil, the lamp, keeping it lit and burning continually is a way for us to acknowledge, to experience, to be reminded of God's presence with us every minute of every day. So the door is open for some creativity here. Uh, you see that image of the candle with three wicks on it. Uh, that's kind of cool. Oh, turn the page. I don't think you should try this. Uh, don't put the wax in your hand. But it starts with this little prayer, number one. This isn't about you just coming up with some fantastic thing you're going to do for God. This is your friendship with him. And you want to ask him, even as the prayer describes here, what is it that you would like me to do? What would make this experience of encountering you with the help of the sacred flame, what would make that helpful to me so that I am especially aware of your presence? My GPS is being calibrated, my gift of present sense, and I'm very aware of your presence, Jesus. So, uh, there it is, that prayer. Start right there and then look at the possibilities. And it may involve a, a number of candles. It may be a, a lamp of some sort. I, I love I love collecting lamps and candles of different kinds. And um, I like the one where you come into a completely black space, you know, in the night, in a dark room, and, and you strike that match. And the impact, the presence of Jesus symbolized with that bright light. Um, and then take the moment to do some journaling. And that's so important for you and your relationship with God. That in itself is a spiritual practice. And then it gives you a launch point in your discussions with your mentoring partner or small group cohort that you're a part of. Um, very important. So I just want to mention now these two chapters you're going to be engaging here in Encounter 3 um, are really, uh, really unique. And the author for these two chapters, Leslie Weatherhead, has an unbelievably sensitive and smart way of understanding biblical truth related to how do you have a friendship with someone who you can't physically engage or see in the room with you? How does that work? And uh, so Leslie unpacks that here uh, in such a beautiful way. And um, perhaps you can see the mess I've made of my, my, my copy of, of the mentoring guide. Um, I hope yours will look something like this, too, as you mark it, as you use colors, as you use stars or check marks and uh, fill in those journaling exercises. Just one thing I want to point out in the chapter called Practicing Encounter. So you recognize now when we introduced the Surrendering Guide to you, we talked about the language of spiritual formation, encountering Christ. So here we are practicing encounter and this previous chapter on the formation friendship. 
Um, so now we're getting into the depth of it, the meaning of it. This is so important. One of my favorite parts here on, is on page 77, and you'll see the ABCD where uh, Leslie Weatherhead summarizes this amazing transition from G Jesus being you know, present physically with them prior to the resurrection, and now he's present with them post-resurrection, but he has a new body, and he's preparing them for a time, just a few days from these experiences, when he's going to leave the planet. And then their experience will be the indwelling presence of Christ and the Holy Spirit. So he talks about Mary, the two disciples on the Emmaus Road, the twelve gathered in the upper room, and then again on a mountain in Galilee near Bethany when his relationship with them is changing from that very tangible, like we have with each other, human friendships, to something supernatural, something profoundly uh, built upon a spiritual encounter, a definite, actual encounter with Jesus. Uh, so that'll bring you through to the end of uh, encounter three. And uh, think about that prayer that you're memorizing, you're trying to say every day during this study. Oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, you woke me again. You wake me at the morning watch. Your glory moves me to my knees. Posture. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy. I cry out and beg you, please. And lead me to encounter you, your sacred presence, like a flame. Open up my eyes and ears to worship now your holy name. So part of, part of the prayer, part of the reminder, the combination of the spiritual disciplines, the practices, the biblical teaching, and our actual encounter with the person of Jesus. Blessings on your journey.